Hi, this is a book review and summary of Spillover by David Quammen. Now, the topic of this book is highly interesting at the moment, uh, given the current coronavirus pandemic. In this book, Quammen investigates infectious diseases that spread from the animal kingdom into humans. The technical term given for this is spillover, hence the title of the book. And that's precisely how scientists believe the current coronavirus pandemic originated from. So if there's ever a time to read a book about viruses and how they spread from humans, from the animals into humans, and how humans spread that to others, it's now. David Quammen is a journalist with a hefty background in scientific non-fiction literature. So he's so he has a wealth of experience and the technical expertise to be able to convey science for the everyday person. Quammen's spillover is a true tour de force. He takes the reader on an adventure into the world of zoonotic diseases and the scientists that try to investigate them, sometimes literally with a net in their hands, chasing after bats in a cave. One of the pleasures of reading this book is the enthusiasm Quaman has for scientific writing and for this particular topic. Quaman is certainly not an armchair writer. He goes out on field trips with the scientists. He listens to what they have to say, but he's also acutely attuned to the environment in which they are working. Spillover is densely packed with facts. Uh, Quaman is a highly meticulous scientific writer, uh, but not overly so, such that if the technical jargon bored you or went way over your head, you could skip those parts and still be able to maintain an understanding of the story. And I don't believe any writer can do that. I highly recommend this book for any reader wanting to get a firm understanding of the nature of this pandemic. But you've probably already been keeping up to date with articles, say, from The New Scientist or The Economist magazine, all about this pandemic. So this book specifically will help you to gain a firm understanding of the interaction between ecology, environment, and the roles human, the role humans have played in the worrying, increasing trend of zoonotic diseases spilling over into the human population. In fact, David Quarman writes about the next big one, referring to epidemiologists predicting there will be a worldwide pandemic, and they predict it will be of a and they predict it will be airborne and of a flu-like nature. So go ahead, check it out, and be ready to go on a thrilling journey into the world of viruses and zoonotic diseases. In Spillover, Quarman introduces us to many technical terms. Uh, the three, perhaps the three most important epidemiological terms uh, the reader will come across is firstly reservoir host. Uh, the reservoir host is where the pathogen, be it a bacteria or a virus, usually resides. For the current coronavirus, scientists believe this to be uh, a bat of some form. This is because there have been several other diseases that have originated in bats. The reservoir host for the Marburg virus was found to be in fruit bats. The reservoir host for the Ebola virus has yet to be confirmed. Despite the fact that this has been ravaging parts of Central Africa for decades now, although scientists do believe that just like the Marburg virus, the reservoir host for Ebola is similarly a fruit bat. Next is Vector. This is the intermediary animal species that links the reservoir host with the human. 
Now, for the bubonic plague, uh, the vector was rats, the black rat. For malaria, the vector is mosquitoes. The last key term is spillover, which is where the pathogen spills over into the human world. Now, there are instances where a pathogen, pathogen jumps from the reservoir host directly into humans. But usually a vector of some sort is involved. For the current coronavirus, the vector has yet to be conclusively, conclusively identified, although there are speculation that it is perhaps a pangolin. I forgot to mention zoonotic and zoonoses. This is a technical term given to diseases that originate in the animal world that spread to the human world. After having read this book, the Nipah virus outbreak in Malaysia in 1998 stood out, to, stood out to me as being almost a classic textbook case of a zoonotic spillover. The origins of the Nipah virus outbreak go something like this. A pig farmer clears land inhabited by wildlife. The farmer builds his pig farm and wild fruit bats are roosting in the trees. The fruit bats urinate onto the berries down below and the pigs feed, of course, on the berries. So here the virus spreads from the reservoir host to the vector, which is the pig. The pig farmer handles the pig. He will butcher or he will send the pig to be butchered. And now the Nipah virus jumps from the vector to a human. The human then transmits the Nipah virus to other people. At first, the Nipah virus was assumed to be some form of general encephalitis, but a scientist at the University of Malaysia questioned this. And so he conducted his very own analysis and found that this was indeed a brand new virus. The scientist then communicates this directly to the authorities. The authorities then use contact tracing, but not apps, because this was back in 1998, to rein in anybody possibly exposed to the virus. And then they, of course, exterminate any and all pigs that are possibly infected with the virus. The rapid response and the mobilization of epidemiological teams was able to control and limit the outbreak of the Nipah virus in 1998. In the book, Quarman writes about several zoonotic diseases. He writes about the pathogen itself. Uh, he writes about how the pathogen spilled over into humans and how humans spread this to other humans and its devastating impacts. Large sections of the book is dedicated to writing about the scientists and the epidemiologists whose job it is to explore these zoonotic outbreaks. I appreciated the effort by Quarman to highlight the work carried out by these unsung heroes. These scientists are the ones on the ground walking through jungle, through tough terrain, doing their best to identify the source of these outbreaks. And if this is your thing, then Laurie Garrett's The Coming Plague goes into much more detail about these individual scientists. There are whole chapters on the hunt for the Ebola virus, and Garrett writes a lot about Peter Pio, who then became uh, the exec executive director of UNAIDS, and I believe now is a professor at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Returning to David Quarman's spillover, the chapter on the Ebola virus is particularly terrifying. It was actually whilst Quarman was on assignment with, with National Geographic where he heard about 13 dead gorillas. So whilst he's trekking in the thick jungle of Central Africa alongside a scientist, sitting down by the campfire. One of the porters highlights that very close by was where they originally found 13 dead gorillas. It was the sight of these 13 dead gorillas that made 
him realise something was definitely wrong. And that's when the Ebola virus struck in his village. This Ebola outbreak had already happened before Kwamant was on his National Geographic assignment. And it was this talk that gave Kwamant the inspiration to write more about viruses and led to the culmination of his work, Spillover. The chapter on the multiple outbreaks of Ebola in Central Africa has a unique mysteriousness to it, not least because of the fact that the reservoir host for the Ebola virus has yet to be identified conclusively. And secondly, the way in which Ebola quietly enters a village creates utter havoc and destruction and quietly leaves again, not to be seen again or heard from for several years until it re-enters another part of Central Africa, creating the same human misery but on a grander scale. And as transportation has become easier and with the rise of big cities in Central Africa, the transmittability, the transmittability of the virus is much more efficient. The chapter on HIV is equally fascinating. True to Kwaman's detective style, he writes about evidence that HIV had entered the human population much, much earlier than initially thought and much earlier than the explosion of HIV AIDS in the homosexual community in uh, North America uh, during the 1980s. What's even more fascinating is that there are 12 separate unique HIV infections, each representing 12 unique individual spillovers from the animal world into the human population. And it's possible there have been many more spillovers in our earlier history. What this means is, is that HIV was not a highly unlikely event. In fact, it's representative of a growing worrying trend in the numbers of spillovers from the animal world into the human population. And with respect to HIV, this is owing to how human populations interact with the wild chimpanzee and gorilla populations within Central Africa. If you're reading this book specifically owing to the coronavirus epidemic, then you cannot miss the chapter on SARS. In this chapter, Kwaman writes about the wet markets of southern China. He writes about a professor from southern China who goes to Hong Kong for a conference. And in the Hong Kong hotel, he's vomiting blood and very ill with SARS. And in the very same hotel, at the same time, there are two Singaporean holidaymakers who contract that very same SARS virus and takes it back to Singapore. SARS was successfully contained and the efforts of the epidemiological team and the health systems around Southeast Asia was able to prevent SARS from becoming a global pandemic. I will wrap up this book review and summary by highlighting the key message from this book, which is the interaction between ecology, the environment and people. As the human population expands and encroaches on the wild natural landscape, the species living in these environments will have to adapt to the presence of these new humans. This ecological disturbance causes stress on the wild species living in this environment. It forces these species to adapt to their new, to the presence of these humans and possibly be forced to expand into this new human environment. These environmental and ecological pressures are bringing animal pathogens into the human population and modern human technology is spreading these viruses more widely and more efficiently than before. There will be some people who regard these outbreaks as the revenge of the rainforest or nature's way of getting back at the poor treatment by human beings, but that's a misleading way to think about it. It's not that these deadly viruses are coming to us but quite the opposite, it's human beings going to them. I'll end with a quote by Kwaman, 
as we besiege them, as we corner them, as we exterminate them and eat them, we are getting their diseases. I hope you have found this book review and summary interesting and useful, and uh, thank you for watching.